Next is, hey, Charlie and Ben, love the podcast and often tell people to listen to you guys for wisdom. Nice. I wonder if your view of Iraq would change if you knew about the atrocities carried out by Saddam Hussein to their own citizens and hostilities with peaceful neighboring countries. I would be very interested in a discussion from you two on the morality of and ethics of policing the world's evils. Is the United States imposing their subjective morality on the world? And if the United States stopped these actions, would the world look at the evil and say somebody should do something without anyone taking action? Thanks for the content. So first question, would my views change? Very potentially. Like, well, I, I don't think that our, I don't think the complaint with George Bush is that Iraq should have been left to do whatever it wanted with Saddam Hussein unchecked. No. It's that we were lied to. Yes. It's so, that you, that instead of saying what you said, which is, hey, there's a dictator in the Middle East doing atrocities. Here are the atrocities. I think that we should go put ourselves. Intervene. At, in, yeah. I think we should intervene. We were made to believe there were weapons of mass destruction, mm -hmm. but there was no intel. As far as I know, there was no intel that that was the case. No, in fact, the UN Hans Blix came in and said, this is definitely not the case. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. And we said, we know, we know. And then there wasn't. So that's at least my big gripe was we didn't say that's why we were doing it. We said we were doing it for WMDs. Then we got in there and then we retconned yeah. why we went in there. And, and people started to say that reason. But I think that that's, you deceived the American populace to get into a war and who knows what your true motives were. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was that, maybe it was oil. Maybe it was your big golden heart, yeah. but you lied. And so that's my biggest gripe, sure. at least with how George Bush got into that second Iraq war was, you didn't say it was because we were going to help those people because he was being mean to his neighbors. Yes. You said it was because there was a global threat that wasn't true. And you said it because you cared more about invading Iraq than letting the populace actually decide how they felt about your, your real motives. Yeah. And okay. So then you go, Oh no, it was a good thing to do. Then you go, okay, great. We, the U S wants to do some charity. Fantastic. Let's run it through the ROI spreadsheet. You're right. right? Which is for people to <laughs> that, let's figure out where we can do the greatest good, the greatest good. So we're willing to spend $2 trillion and about, you know, a hundred thousand Iraqi lives, if not more and several thousand servicemen from all over the world. How many lives can we save? It is absolutely not by invading Iraq. Now, it's probably not an invasion anywhere. It's probably... You're uh, saying with the same budget and manpower? Malaria nets. You know, it's probably uh, contraceptives. It's probably clean water. Like, you could have saved for the trillions of dollars that we have spent. Oh, my God. You could have made the world a tremendously better place. And it's very obvious that that wasn't what people wanted to do because they never ran that calculation. That wasn't... They, they had other motives which led to... Iraq as the as the actual choice. Now you go, was it net a good thing? Only you have to compare it to the other world. It's like we spent all of this money and got what some return in that Saddam Hussein isn't doing horrible things, but I do believe it's some it's over a hundred thousand Iraqi civilians were killed in the violence surrounding that. Was Saddam Hussein gonna kill a hundred thousand? I don't even and this is where I mean I don't know. I'm not even sure that Iraq is better off net with the intervention, given how many, how much violence there was in the subsequent years um, and what Saddam Hussein might have done in the... It could know, be, really though. I mean, know. it's truly it an I don't be. know. It's, it's truly, truly an I don't know. know. But what I do know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that given the budget of lives and money that the U.S. spent on Iraq, that they could have, we could have done so much more good in the world. Um, and in terms of what do I think of the U.S. being the world's cop, I think that's not what we are. We're not the world's cop. Um, that is, you know, we argue whether we should be the world cop, but we've actually missed the true argument, which is we're, we're self-interested actor that is acting on a confluence of personal motives and corporate motivations and, uh, natural resources. But, and the reason you say that is because we allow we atrocities. Look, we don't, nobody suggested that we should go to the Congo where there's been a war for 20 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just want to, I'm just trying to spell it out. You're saying have, when you say we're not the world's cop, you don't mean just because we haven't been elected. You're saying we're not doing a great job. No, if no, the we goal don't, is, we're not even trying. Yeah. We're not even trying. We haven't even assessed where the greatest amount of violence is occurring in the world that could be stopped at the easiest with the least amount of resources. Uh, we talk about these places and then they are abstracted from the rest of the world, made to be the sole place of evil. And then we go, oh, well, we're the cop because we're going in. But that's, um, that would be like if a cop, and this is what people say is happening, showed up at one person's house because they had their own selfish motivations and, um, you know, said that the husband was an abuser, found that he wasn't, shot him anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? And said, well, 
he did was doing other bad stuff instead. That's that's um, not a police officer. That's that is a self interested entity. And so I don't think that we are uh, being world cops. And I think it's anyone who would argue that that's our motive. I would just ask, like, why not Congo? Why not here? Why not malaria nets? Malaria nets? Why not any of this? Why trillions of dollars on these particular places? Uh, and I don't, I've never heard a good answer to that. So that's what I think. And would anybody step up? Uh, only insofar as it affected their interests. Like China's going to go be the world cop for Taiwan, but probably not, you know, <laughs> and, they're, and they're buying up, what is it, the Belt and Road Initiative. They're lending a ton of money to Africa so that they can own it, which is not anything new. <laughs> that, we've been doing that for a long time. Yeah. So yeah, would and that doesn't mean up? that that doesn't mean that all the soldiers that went to Iraq are bad people by any means. It's just saying that no, it was no, an, an, an ill-advised war. It just means that that the U.S. is not, uh, it's not quality, like it might be quantitatively different. And I do believe, well, I don't even know. You can make the argument either way. It's not like we're the first uh, benevolent empire that has ever existed. And every empire from the Romans, they insisted that they were civilizing the barbarians, that they were spreading Christianity. Everyone tells themselves that they're doing good things. And, and you have to realize that people believe it, just like most Americans do. This isn't to say that America is a uniquely evil force. It's to say that we're this, probably the same degree of self-interested as anyone that Every has been throughout has come, history. Yeah. I think that's probably a fair guess. We're, we're, why not? We're, we're people like any other. Like that, that somehow the Enlightenment values have made us better, yet we haven't dealt with malaria and clean water. I just don't, I just don't see that. Um, now, it's possible that we're less violent because of our circumstances in an interconnected world. I, I would potentially believe that. But uh, And Cold War type. Yeah, yeah. Just and general sense that you can't. Mutually assured destruction. Mutually assured destruction, yeah. yeah. So that's that's my large-scale political view. I used to think that America was an evil empire, and then I realized we're just an empire <laughs> like, like all the others. And if you took an underdog and put them on top, they do the same type of self-interested yeah. stuff. And I used to think we were a good empire i was, oh, that was, I was all about one. i was all yeah. about america like yeah whatever you think about america growing up that's good that's what i thought mm-hmm. and uh yeah to me it just seems clear that there's there somehow there's other motivations because you don't see the u.s taking the action you would expect if the number one question was how do we make the world a better place yeah that's just not what our foreign intervention looks like to me yeah and it only works because and this is the thing is the news and your which is your um the funnel by which you understand the global context can just convince you. Like, can you name how many countries are there? How many of them can you name? <laughs> you know, could you? How many of them could you place on a map? Like, you could probably point to where Iraq is. How many wars decently. are happening right now? Yeah. How many wars are happening right now? How many what violent is, conflicts will happen in the next week? What's the number one global cause of death and suffering? We don't even know these types of mm-hmm. the answers to these questions. What's not just what's the number one? What's the number one easiest to solve on a dollar value? Yeah, I, I think I know that it's malaria, at least from a person to donate, but from a country to solve a problem? Christ, I, I mean, that's that's a level of resources that I am not even putting my analysis on because I know I'll never get to do we, influence it. Do we even have, and I don't, I'm not saying we should, but you would if you were, if you thought your goal was make the world a better place, you'd have a make the world a better place budget. Do we have like $500 million that the U.S. spends every year to try to make the world a better place? The Department of Defense. Okay. Then. <laughs> so, so I guess what I'm saying is, you, if we don't have a budget set aside for it, then it's hard to believe it's our goal. Some people will say it's uh, foreign aid, but if you look at foreign aid again, it doesn't go to the countries that need it the most. It goes to strategic allies. A ton of it goes to Israel, who does not need it nearly as much as the Congo does. It bro. just <laughs> they just don't, bro, bro, bro. This is another thing that you were like Israel, <laughs> bro. I don't actually know enough about it to fight you on this, but yeah. I can say bro enough that bro. I can cut you off. Um, yeah. If you just, if you look at the world and go, how did, what, what best describes this? A, a benevolent thing that just got confused about where to send its money and where the need is or something else. Something else is what yeah. makes a ton of sense. If you look at it without the, the propaganda, in my opinion. You know, That's a country it. has the most Nobel prizes per capita. Israel. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right, bro. I think it's funny that you feel, <laughs> you've talked about this, that you feel that you feel probably you do feel a bit connected to Israel, right? I'm mostly trolling you. Do you feel any? I don't know enough about it. Is it true? So do I feel connected to it? If I told you that Israel was being invaded or and uh, had gotten 
crushed and that Yemen was being invaded. I'd be crushed. sad. I'd be more sad about Israel. Yeah. I, to me, that's, again, that's wild. Bro, I me. went there for six weeks. <laughs> no, it wasn't because you went there. No. If I told you that Costa Rica was invaded, you wouldn't give a shit. I think this is the power of identity. And you're a person that is well, pretty I'm, disconnected from identity. But I'd that, be sad about Costa Rica because of the surf. But if you pick a different place. Okay. Uh, I won't say who because I'll get in trouble. But What about Brazil? You, um, you were in Brazil longer. Would you be sadder if Israel was wiped off the map by a neighbor or if Brazil was wiped off the map oh, by a neighbor? For sure. Yeah. I think that to me is a foible of human identity. Also Costa Rica. I'd be sadder about than Brazil. I think Brazil could use some new governing, honestly. <laughs> what, like Same land, same people. No one gets hurt, but there's just a shifting government. Yeah. That might not be so bad. Yeah. Well, well A uh, new ruling class. Well, I mean, that could be the case in Israel as well. Nobody gets hurt, right? No, no. Shifting that made me land. sad, dude. Shifting. I'm Jewish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Anyways. What's the next question? Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.